Check it out. Oh man, this would be such an amazing workshop. A little while ago, I ran a very unscientific poll on this channel and I asked the question, if you're self-employed and run what you deem to be a successful business, how much are you charging per hour? Now, obviously this was a really subjective question. It was open to everyone worldwide and not just to woodworkers, but the results were quite interesting. And thankfully, 52% of the people who responded are charging over 30 pounds an hour, which by the way, is the bare minimum that I think that self-employed people should generally be charging. However, that still left 48% of people thinking that you can run a successful business charging under 30 pounds an hour and I find that a little bit concerning. Now, obviously different jobs have different outgoings and everyone has a different definition of what success is. But in this video, I just want to give you a bit of a reality check of what you need to be charging as a woodworker if you want to run your own workshop. I'm gonna go through all of the running costs for two different sized commercial units. One of them about 500 square foot, which is about double what I've got here. And that's about the smallest size I would consider if I was moving into a commercial space. And the other one is a beautiful 2,500 square foot industrial unit, which is your dream workshop territory. That would be 10 times bigger than what I've got at the minute. If you are a professional woodworker and you run a workshop, but you feel that you're just not making enough money to survive, I'm hoping this video is gonna give you a bit more confidence to charge more for your services and hopefully help you build a more sustainable long-term business. If you have thought about putting your rates up and you're a little bit nervous about doing that, because I know a lot of people are, I've got an inspirational comment that I received from one of my followers that I'll share with you towards the end of this video and I'm hoping that'll help. From a public perspective, if you're not a woodworker, I'm just hoping that this video will give you a little bit of an insight into how much us woodworkers have to charge just to make a basic living. So next time a joiner tells you that they charge 300 pound a day or whatever, hopefully you'll understand that you're not being ripped off. I also want you to keep in the back of your mind that at the moment, the UK minimum wage for anyone who's over 25 is £8.21 an hour. And the average UK salary is around £36,000 a year, which equates roughly to £18 an hour. But what most people fail to consider is that 18 pounds an hour as an employee is absolutely not the same as 18 pounds an hour if you're running your own business. So let me show you this 500 square foot workshop first of all, double what I've got here. Of course it can be done with a smaller shop but you will be tripping over yourself. As I say, this is about double what I've currently got and it's really the bare minimum of what you need to run a successful commercial joinery workshop. It has an up and over garage door which makes access really easy. There's a big gas powered fan heater, a single WC and this particular unit is partitioned into two sections. There's also enough headroom for some overhead storage if you did want to build that. Even with a 500 square foot shop, you probably won't have enough space for a dedicated finishing room unless you sacrifice space for wood storage. And if you have staff, you will absolutely be tripping over each other. So I'm not gonna take you through how all this spreadsheet works. I've covered it in other videos. You can download this spreadsheet if you wanna play along at home from my Patreon. This is a brand new version of my hourly rate spreadsheet version three. If you've got an older version, then you might wanna download the latest version because it's got a few extra things that I've added into it. All I'm gonna do in here on the required personal income tab, if you want, you can provide a full kind of breakdown of all of your outgoings and it'll help you work out how much money you actually need to make. 
but I'm gonna kind of bypass all of that just so this video isn't too long and I'm just gonna pop a figure into this additional desired income box at the bottom here and I'm gonna go in with a figure of 14,422 pounds. The reason for that figure, the UK minimum wage if you're over 25 at the moment is £8.21 per hour, which works out at about 16 grand a year gross, which after tax and national insurance gives you a take-home net pay of £14,422. So if you're on minimum wage, please aim for higher than minimum wage folks but this is kind of your absolute bare minimum of what you should be making anything below that you're not even earning what you would make at mcdonald's so let's fly through the business running costs for the smaller workshop business insurance we're going to assume is about 150 pound a year we're talking their kind of public liability insurance it's pretty cheap you can probably get it cheaper than that to be honest but 150 is a reasonable guess at that. Equipment and depreciation, we're gonna put a very optimistic thousand pounds a year. If you're running a joinery business or a woodworking business, you could easily spend a thousand pounds plus on a single tool. So assuming that you're gonna be running your tools over maybe a five year lifespan and you've got five grand's worth of tools, that's depreciation of about a thousand pounds a year. But as I say, you could run into 20 grand's worth of tools for a joinery business, no problem. Accountancy fees, let's take a stab in the dark at 500 pound a year. Mobile phone, 30 quid a month, 360 a year. You're gonna need a website, you're gonna need to advertise your business, you're gonna need web hosting, domains, all that sort of thing. We'll pop in a figure of 500 pound a year to cover all of that side. And consumables, obviously, like nails and glues and sandpaper and saw blades and all that sort of thing. Let's pop in £500 a year on consumables. For the minute, I'm assuming you're not employing any staff. It's just you. Now, if you're running a woodworking business of any description, you're almost certainly going to need to have a vehicle. Let's put in, again, we're going to keep this as optimistic as we can make it in terms of not spending too much. Let's say uh, £1,500 a year on vehicle, either loan or depreciation over a period of time. We'll pop in £2,000 for fuel, £300 for general maintenance, you know, tyres and all that sort of thing. Servicing and MOT costs, we'll keep that as low as we can possibly get it, £300 a year. Vehicle insurance, how old are you? Let's say £600 a year, but you could be looking at three or four times that if you're under 25. Vehicle tax, we'll guess at £250 a year, depending on what sort of vehicle you're driving. If you're going to be moving waste around of any description, you're going to need a waste carrier's licence, which I believe is about £150 to set that up. So we'll include the cost of that in there as well. And now we need to have a look at your actual premises costs. For this particular unit, about 500 square foot, we're looking £6,800 per year, including VAT. I'm assuming you're not VAT registered, by the way. If you are, you will be able to claim your VAT back, but it also means on the flip side, you're going to have to charge your customers VAT as well. So you're instantly 20% more expensive. Contents insurance, I had a quick look into insurance and I managed to find a few policies that cover, you know, pretty much everything apart from employers' liability insurance. So this is covering public liability, legal expenses, tools, business equipment, stock. Let's take an optimistic kind of middle ground £750 on insurance. And of course, since that includes public liability insurance will no longer need to have this business insurance over here so we can pop that to zero buildings insurance you're only really going to need that if you actually physically own the building gas water and electric you could easily be spending 60 pounds a month on utility bills let's say 720 pounds a year trade waste i've popped some information in the comments there for different size bins based on newcastle council the cheapest one that they do is £260 a year for the smallest wheelie bin that you can possibly get. If you've got a workshop filled with expensive equipment, 
your insurance provider will almost certainly insist that you've got a monitored alarm system. And that basically means that if the alarm goes off, it automatically contacts the police. Again, the costs of this vary from region to region. We'll say £500 a year. And I'm assuming you're going to want a broadband connection of some description into your workshop. Let's guess at £30 a month. So £360 per year. And check it out, folks. We are at £17,350 of running costs before you make a penny salary. So if we just head across onto the verdict tab now, what we can do is we can work out what sort of hourly rate you need to be charging to cover your running costs of the business and draw in minimum wage. As you can see at the minute, uh, the business is making almost a £32,000 loss because we haven't included any income whatsoever. So let's just plough down this list here. How many hours a day do you want to work? The normal's about eight hours a day. How many hours per day are you not going to be able to charge for your time? If you're charging on an hourly basis where you're travelling from job to job, Obviously, you're not going to be able to charge for your lunch. You're not going to be able to charge for your travel time and that sort of thing. Let's say half an hour a day for lunch, but that figure could easily run into two or three hours, depending on how much traveling you're doing. And by the way, if you charge a day rate, just obviously multiply up your hourly rate by eight or seven and a half or whatever. Working days per week is probably going to be five working days a week. Holiday days off per year. In corporate land, you're probably going to get at least 20 days off as standard, plus bank holidays. And in England, you get eight bank holidays per year. In Scotland, you get nine. So if we base it on what you would get in England, your normal holiday days plus bank holiday days, you're looking at 28 days off per year. Sales and admin days per year. You've got to allow time for actually going out and winning business and doing quotes doing your accounts, updating your website, updating your social media stuff. To run a business effectively, I would say that you need to be working at least a day a week just on business-related activities that you can't necessarily charge the customer for. So let's pop 50 days in there. If you employ staff, that'll go higher and higher to the point where almost all of your time will be spent managing staff rather than doing chargeable work. And you can say, yeah, but I do all my business admin like in the evenings and out of hours and on the weekends. Well, all that means is that you've increased your maximum working hours per day. You're just pretending that you're working less than you actually are. Sick days per year. Let's very optimistically say that you're not going to be ill for any more than three days a year. Because obviously when you're self-employed, you're not going to get paid while you're on holiday or when you're off sick. And I can also tell you right now, if you increase your working hours or you reduce your holiday time, your sick days will almost certainly go up. Predicted work rate. This is kind of one of the hardest things to get right when you're first starting out in business. Because sometimes no matter how hard you try and plan your jobs in so that you're working every single day, life just doesn't work like that. You do get times where customers are on holiday and everyone wants the work done the week before and you just can't get a customer booked in for a particular week and that will happen quite regularly. A good starting point for a predicted work rate is about 80%. If you manage to push up to about 90% work rate you're doing really well. You will almost never hit 100% where every single free day you've got will be filled up with chargeable work. Life just doesn't work like that. Now, I have seen joiners and woodworkers going out there and charging as little as £10 an hour. And we've already seen on the poll that I ran that 11% of people were charging £14 an hour or under. So let's pop £10 an hour in here and let's see how our business is doing. Oh dear, we're making a £21,000 a year loss at the minute. You're not making enough money to pay yourself at all, and the business is making a rolling loss of £6,610 per year. Let's up that to a slightly more reasonable £20 an hour and see what we can do. Okay, well, at least now you're making enough to cover the bare running costs of the business, but you're only taking home... £4,130 a year. You're nowhere near minimum wage. Let's see what we need to up the hourly rate to to hit 
this magic minimum wage figure here. £31 an hour and you'll just about be making enough to cover the running costs of the business and pay yourself minimum wage. And I don't think any of these figures are particularly pessimistic. I think all of these are, are pretty optimistic, to be honest. So you would have a nice little workshop there, and if you can keep the business rolling in, you know, you're making enough money to live on, I suppose, just. I'm hoping you'll aim for a bit higher than minimum wage, though. But what if you wanted a shop to compete with our friends across the pond. Let's take a look at the 2,500 square foot unit. Check it out. Oh man, this would be such an amazing workshop. Definitely enough space for a dedicated finishing room and you could even potentially build an office above the main workshop area. So this is easily big enough for yourself and probably five to 10 members of staff if you kitted out some office space. You've got a giant vehicle entry door I would seriously consider designing this so that you could leave your vehicle in here overnight. You've got kitchen facilities, his and her loos. Two big gas fan heaters, although I bet in the winter it would still get pretty cold in here. I'd definitely add a second level if for no other reason than to reduce your heating bills. So how much would a workshop like this cost? So let's update our base level running costs for a unit of that kind of size. Equipment and depreciation, you're going to need to fill up your shop with equipment, otherwise there's no point in having a shop that big. I would say you need to be allowing at least £3,000 a year to allow for buying new tools and depreciation of the tools that you've already got. Accounting fees will leave as they are, mobile phone fees will leave as they are, web and advertising can stay the same as well, but obviously I would suggest that you put a lot more money into marketing your business if you're going to have to sustain much, much higher running costs. Consumables are obviously going to be higher, we'll optimistically say £1,000 a year, but it could easily be much much more than that we'll keep your vehicle costs as low as feasibly possible so we'll keep that as they are at the minute let's have a look at the premises costs and for a unit of that kind of size we are looking at a rent of 28 thousand pounds a year including vat and the bad news is for a unit of that kind of size business rates kick in. Business rates are like kind of an extra tax that you have to pay on commercial premises in the UK. Luckily for smaller units at the moment, generally you don't have to pay it, but for a unit of this kind of size you would, and your rates are likely to be around £8,200 a year. I'm assuming service charges are going to be included within the actual rent, but sometimes you do have to pay service charges separately. That generally covers things like maintenance of the land around the business park that you might be in. Contents insurance, much bigger shop. I'm going to assume that that's going to double. Again, gas, electric and water. You could easily be spending £100 a month on utilities. Trade waste, let's go for a bog standard four wheel commercial waste bin, which you're looking at £553 a year in Newcastle. Your alarm system should be about the same and your telephone internet cost should be about the same. And there you have it folks, a workshop of that kind of size. Optimistically, you're looking at running costs of about £51,000 a year and that's before you've paid yourself a penny. Let's have a look at what sort of hourly rate you're going to have to charge just to break past the minimum wage threshold. And, oh dear, at £31 an hour, we have a shortfall of almost £32,000 a year. So let's see what we're going to have to charge to get that up to make sure that you can actually at least bring in minimum wage. And there we have it. £63 an hour would be the absolute bare minimum that you would need to be charging if you're running a shop of that size in the UK on your own and even then you're only just breaking past minimum wage let's see what you'd need to charge to get that up to the uk average wage which is closer to 36 grand a year so there you go 90 pounds an hour will make sure that you're making enough money to cover the running costs of a workshop of that kind of size and make sure that you're at least bringing in the uk average wage and that is folks a day rate of about 720 pounds a day <laughs> Now,
Now, obviously, I'm not covering things like how much you would make from the resale of goods. For example, if you're doing, I don't know, kitchen fitting and you're buying the kitchen in for £2,000 and then you sell it to the customer for £4,000, you can add all of that through the cost of goods, the COGS here, and then you can add on to your other income sale of goods here and just pop a figure in there if you want to cater for the resale of goods as part of your business model. But all I'm working on here is assuming that it's a kind of service only based business that you've got. Realistically, for a unit of that kind of size, you're going to have to be employing staff. But then bear in mind that your running costs are going to be even higher than what we've talked about on here. So there you go, folks. I hope I haven't put you off too much. Do I think it's viable to run commercial workshops in the UK of that kind of size? Too right, I do. But you have got to be pitching your services appropriately. You've got to crunch the numbers and make sure you're charging enough. If you don't, you are going to run into problems. But if you do, you absolutely have the potential to create an amazing business. I have mentioned this on this channel before, but no one's taken me up on it yet. If you are charging less than £30 an hour and you are running a successful workshop in the UK, then please send me a redacted copy of your accounts. I'm not saying it's not possible, it's just I've never seen it done. The only joiners I did know who were charging less than £30 an hour have all gone out of business. Now, obviously, there are a few other options for running a woodworking business with lower overheads. Obviously, having a garage workshop is one of them, but garages aren't free, so you're gonna to have to buy a property that has a garage in the first place. I'm not gonna get into the legalities of running a business from home because that's another whole minefield but you might as well forget about employing staff. You're gonna really struggle to get employer's liability insurance if you're not running from a proper commercial workspace. But apart from anything else, I would strongly recommend that you charge based on what your costs would be if you did have a proper commercial workshop. Otherwise, you're building a business model that's not scalable or sustainable. Another route, obviously, is to build your own workshop if you can find the land to do it. And in the UK, that's not an easy thing to do. You might hit lucky and find a more rural property that has outbuildings, but they're really hard to find. Unfortunately, we live in a country that prioritises land for grouse shooting over land that can actually be used for something useful. The other option, of course, is to not have a workshop at all and just be 100% mobile. This can work really well for some people, but do bear in mind that you'll not be as efficient as you would be in a fully kitted out workshop, which basically translates to you making less money and working harder. Having said that, there are joiners and carpenters out there with some amazing mobile setups, but do just bear in mind what it's going to look like in British weather when you're going in and out of a customer's house with wet boots covered in sawdust. As promised though, if you are a little bit worried about charging more for your services, let me just read to you this awesome comment that Simon left on the poll. He spent 20 years as a first and second fit joiner and he was charging up to 240 pounds a day. But he went on to say, now I fit out in large corporates with furniture that we make and an average of £800 per day per man, and he has eight men, and has never had a client question it. Profit is not a rude word, but you've got to be able to support it with great customer service and a level of finish that can't be questioned. Thank you so much for sharing such inspirational feedback, Simon, and I 100% agree. I would love to know whether you're set up with a workshop or you work out the back of your van. Let us know in the comments below. And also, tweet some pictures of your workshop or your mobile setup. Gosforth Andy on Twitter, and I'll give you a bit of a retweet. Remember, if you want a bit more information about running a small business in the UK, you can follow my Small Business Toolbox channel, link in the description below. If you're new to this channel, it would be awesome to have you on board as a subscriber. Take care, folks, and I shall see you next time. Bye-bye.